Smoky Treat says, uh, seems like, are you American, um, Smoky Treats? I wonder. I'm trying to sh put your comment up on the screen now. I'm having a little bit of trouble. Seems like uh, when people find out you're American, they immediately decide not to negotiate at, at all on house prices. Or yeah. is that just in general, people aren't negotiating on house prices? Um, no. Probably your view first in as the American in no. Portugal, Veronica. No, we just negotiated 30,000, 40,000 down on a house. And, you know, it was with one of the agencies we don't normally like to work with, but we did. We negotiated way down. And your agent should be a good agent, be able to do this for you. And why are they even explaining anything about who you are? Why are they telling the other agent if you're American or not? If they happen to be home, just kind of keep your conversations quiet. And they shouldn't be telling them whether they're Australian, American, British. It's none of their business, right? So this is, again, that dual agency thing. If you have an agent that knows both sides and then goes, oh yeah, the Americans will pay more and is negotiating for his other client instead of for you as the buyer. It's a problem. It is. Carl. I think that it sort of comes out in the wash though, where, where the clients are from. I mean, I've, I'm sort of negotiating for a, for a client at the moment and basically, and I ask the question myself sometimes, I ask my colleagues, you know, what their experience is, but I do think there, it does happen, you know, where, you know, let's say you've got a property listed, I don't know, let's say it's half a million and the owners are just like, no, that's the price. And you, you sort of go back and back again and that, no, that's the price. And look, sometimes you'll walk away. Obviously, it comes what? back to what the client is prepared to pay. That's always important. What are they prepared to pay? What are they happy paying? But I, I think they probably do take a, take a harder stance and you do need an agent there who can uh, perhaps uh, push on your behalf. But there's no set rule. I see this asked quite a lot in sort of Facebook groups. What what's the standard? You know, I've heard that you can't negotiate, and then other people say you shouldn't. You should start at this point. I mean, th there's no set rule here. You can negotiate. You know, it's what you think the property's worth. If it's listed, listed at half a million and you think it's a bargain, then go and buy it. And if you can get a small discount, that's fantastic. You know, if it's listed at half a million, but you think look, there's other things in the area uh, comparable at four fifty then you need to get the price down. So the, yeah. the, there's no sort of set rule here, you know, but I think, yeah, I mean, if people think American, they just think wealthy, they just do, you know. So it's sort of, it's my job to sort of try and reset those expectations and know that they, they may have some money in the bank, but they're not foolish, you know. Um, they're, they're smart people and that they're not going to be ripped off, so... Yeah, negotiate. You. Always you. negotiate. You can always ask the Thank question. Thank you for your answers. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you for your answers to Smoky Treats' uh, uh, question there. Go on, Veronica. You want to add something else I can see? Well, again, when you're making that first phone call to the other agent and going, hey, you know, I have someone who's interested in looking at this property. Um, and, you know, it looks like it's priced a little bit high for the, for the neighborhood. Is there going to be room for a negotiation if I bring this client to see it? Like, so there's kind of like, you can kind of pull some information if the agent goes, oh man, that thing's been for sale for four years and they're never going to drop the price. They don't want to drop the price. The one yeah. that we just negotiated, they actually said that they said, and it had been for sale for over a year and a half and it was priced too high because you can get your comps, you can do a CMA, you've got the same tools, you can run um, the analysis and show what things are going for similar properties in that area. And you can show that to somebody, but if somebody says, this is what I want for my property. It is what it is. But again, the other agent on the one we just negotiated down quite a bit, it had been for sale a year and a half. They were like, we're not coming down on the price. And we still got them down. I think it's 35000 actually. Good work. So, okay, brilliant. brilliant. And what's a CMA? Current market analysis or something like that? Well done. Current market analysis. Ooh. In America, your title reps do that for you because you have a title. We don't have title here. So again, researching. Yeah, well, that's, that's, in, that's in the post, isn't it, here? The um, the system the, the behind the scenes. What's that called? CMS or something? The uh, Your um, your behind the scenes system with all, all the details of the properties. Well, well, LMS. What's it yeah. called? I use a system here, um, a piece of software called Casafari, and that gives us some overview of, of like a market analysis average yeah. price per square meter, average price for a three, four, five bedroom home in a specific area, average price of a property overall. So there are some indicators. While like the US and the UK, you can look at historic house prices, which is obviously fantastic. You know, I wish they would do that here. The, mm -hmm. the only thing you've got here is to look at sort of what else is currently listed in the market. So it is possible and you can get a good idea of where you're at. You know, is it on the money price wise 
are they, you know, edging a little bit upwards? So we can. Always and what do... is that system called? What's that in, in the United States? What's it called, Veronica? The, 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 so, the back office. So this is a little bit different than what we have in the states. So in the states, right. a title rep will run this for you because all information is public information and it's recorded yes. at the county recorder. So I can yeah. go in and say, how much did Carl pay for this house? Actually, yeah. you can look it up online. They don't have that information here. That's private information. You know how much a place is listed for, but you don't know how much it's sold for. So when you're uh -huh. gathering that data, it's like a Zillow, this Casafari is like a Zillow. It's scraping all the data from all the sites and seeing what it was listed at. So mm -hmm. it's kind of what a listing price was. And then they, when it's taken off the market or marked it sold, then it kind of gives that price, but only if they dropped it. So let's say, it was for sale for a hundred thousand. Easy math, right? Hundred thousand. It sold for eighty, but the agent didn't go in and mark it as sold. It's still going to show that it sold for a hundred, and he's not going to yeah. put his eighty. So this is where an expert like Carl, he's talking to everyone in his office and going, "Hey, you sold that one. How much? You sold that one." So it's really knowing feet on the street what sold too, because these tools are great, but that's listing price. And then you yeah. can dig in and say, "Oh, wow, that one was listed." for you know three years because they'll relist to make it look new one will take it off a new agent will get it on because one of the tricks to listing that we've seen with some unscrupulous <laughs> places is that um they'll go in and tell somebody oh um you want to list your house what do you want to list it for and list it for whatever the client says instead of telling them this is what your property's worth this is the quickest way to sell it does this seem reasonable and counseling them? Um, some of the new agents just are so excited to get a listing and see it as a marketing tool that they'll just throw up whatever price. So that's not always an indicator of the real price or what it's sold for. Um, so the big thing is having a knowledgeable, I keep pointing the other way, a knowledgeable agent. And again, Carl, who is talking to everybody in the office, he's seeing what people have been able to negotiate to and with his own clients that makes the difference and, and from my, of yeah. America where it's logged, it's sold for this much. Yeah, I, I do all that. And then I do actually have um, um, a lady who I refer things to as well. So if a client asks me if they would like a deeper analysis on price, then I, I have a lady who has a business. She, she does market analysis and price analysis of houses. And we do the same thing for listings as well. So, you know, somebody's got some business. I can give a good idea. I think, yeah, you know, that's worth half a million. But I can also get a deeper analysis done on, on many more sort of metrics um, and, and and get a more accurate overview so we know, you know, we're, we're, we're getting the most value we can for our clients. So what a lovely awesome. little business that is. That sounds great. Uh, get in touch with Carl if you want access to that service. MLS is the uh, name of the, the acronym I was looking for. I was thinking, is it PMS? That's something very different, isn't it? And it's not <laughs> oh, the multiple listing service. So the multiple yes. listing service is kind of like your ideal list or whatever here, but it's legitimate and that's from realtors. So realtors yep. usually have a realtor organization to have access to the MLS because their, their association will purchase a system and everybody who is a realtor and part of that MLS group will put in the data and then they can pull a basic market analysis from that. Um, but the real, the, the good stuff, the gold is on sold properties and that's coming from a title rep. So the title reps okay. are the ones that dig into the county recorder and make sure you don't have like a mechanics lien. So let's say, for example, Carl, you're working on my house and I didn't pay you. You can go down and get a lien against the property and the title reps, well, the title companies do all the research to make sure we say there are clouds on title so that there is no cloud on title, no bad things against the title, which then prevents you from really owning it, right? Because when you go to purchase it, if those clouds come first position, it's a problem for you. So, and sometimes they're caught at the notary. Sometimes they're not because you have different agencies in play, right? So if it wasn't filed, so let's say I sold, I sold Carl a house. I owe you 50,000 euros. He sells it to me. It transacts, the transaction goes through. And in the meantime, you were putting a lien against the property. Then that hits. I own the property. I still owe that 50,000. 
Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, there, there. I know people are working on an MLS for Portugal. It shouldn't be too long now. I didn't find that negotiating issues occurred because I was an American as ocean dweller. I found that people don't want to negotiate too much because there is high demand. Of course, yeah. that's the most obvious factor right now in the market, mm-hmm. isn't it? Right. We've got a property to look at from you, Carl. Um, before we do, it appears you live very close to one of the coolest neighbourhoods in the world, not just Portugal. And it was, of course, the subject of our question today. Um, you might like to have a go at this. Um, so uh, Portugal has one of the coolest neighborhoods in the world. That's Costa de Caparica, and it has a nickname. Is it called Capifornia now? Is it called Costa de Happy Rica? Is it Costa Fortune because of all the people buying and doing up property around there? Is it Costa de Caparica because people love it so much? Or is it Puerto Rica um, there? What do you think the answer to that might be? You live there, Cole, or near enough. Oh, I know the answer. Can I say the answer? The no, you can't. Is? Okay, I'm getting rid of that now before he spoils it for everybody. Okay, let's have a look now um, at this wonderful property you want to share with us. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Um, How cool are you um, living there? You have a beauty for us. What have you got um, for us this morning um, from the agency? So it's another listing by my uh, team leader, Christopher, who uh, is currently out in the Far East doing business. It's a nice life. Um, (laughs) Yeah, I didn't get invited. Yeah, we've got this fantastic place. I, I think I say this quite a lot, especially with Christopher's properties. If I win the Euro Millions, then... Uh, yes, then I remember I, you saying this. Yeah, yes. but this, this really is a special place. Um, it, it's in Sintra, um, a luxurious six-bedroom property, um, marble floors, wooden floors, heated inside pool and gym. Um, I mean, it's huge. It's, I think it's 1,500 uh, metres internally, sat on a 5,000-square-metre plot. Looks palatial. You've got views over the uh, the yeah. the uh, 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 Sintra, mountain. yeah, the mountain, the mountain range. I mean, look at that. You know what a fantastic sort of entrance there. You know, you just you know, feel in, like- with a house like this. I, I want to come into from downstairs every morning and have a butler say, "Mr. Munson is approaching the dining room." I, I think you need. I think you need a robe. You know, like a silk robe and a cigar. <laughs> And going be holding your drink for you, you know. It, it, yes, absolutely. Look at it. You can see the marble floors. It's absolutely fantastic. It's got a, a, a lift. 